This is KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guest today is John Chamoff. John is on the committee for the Thaler Holocaust Remembrance Program, which uh, brings a uh, Holocaust speaker to the Cedar Rapids area every year. First off, John, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, this year's uh, program is coming up in the next week or so. That's right. Uh, it's in between April 23rd and 25th, and uh, there are several public possibilities for people to see our speaker. Uh, the first is Sunday, April 23rd at 7 in the evening, First Presbyterian Church downtown, and that's the Yom HaShoah Remembrance Service that's uh, co-produced with the Interreligious Council of Link County. And uh, last year, we were turning people away from the doors, so it's a very popular event, although I will say uh, our speaker speaks relatively briefly at that particular event. Um, then in the next couple of days, on Monday the 24th at 3 p.m., he'll be speaking at Coe College. Tuesday the 25th at 11.15 here at Kirkwood uh, in Ballantyne Auditorium. And then uh, Tuesday night on April 25th also, 7 p.m. at Cornell College in Mount Vernon. The, uh, before we talk specifically about the speaker who's coming in, uh, tell me a little bit, for those who don't know, about the origins of the Thaler program. I know that this was... Uh, uh, a very, you know, a very important thing that Mrs. Thaler wanted to make sure got started and continued. Yes. So um, uh, David Thaler uh, was a physician in Cedar Rapids whose life started out in Poland, and he uh, was able to get out of the country in 1938 or, or emigrated in any event, uh, and uh, then lived in Cedar Rapids and practiced here for many years. Um, he took classes, I think, at Coe College. Uh, I know I saw him going down the, the hallway occasionally visiting uh, people. And um, uh, his wife, uh, Joan Thaler, has, um, uh, after his death, um, given uh, a great bequest uh, and uh, created this memorial fund to bring a speaker every year uh, to educate the community about the Holocaust. And it's really been a wonderful thing. I've been attending their events since the mid-90s when they started. So. And tell me about the speaker who's coming this year. So this year it'll be Dr. Jacob Eisenbach, and he has uh, some, some things that are very special about him. One is he lived in Cedar Rapids for many years, so there may be people uh, locally who know him. Um, a couple of other things, uh, he was a dentist uh, who, who practiced for, for many, many years and apparently just uh, recently retired at age 90-something. I think he's 93 now. Uh, and um, when someone has a career in the sciences like that, I think it allows them to be particularly sober and um, uh, concrete observers of their experience. And I think also of a, of a great Holocaust memoirist, Primo Levi, who was an Italian chemist and who's been able to write with such specificity about his experience. It's really a, an amazing thing to to have such a person be your conduit to the past. What was Dr. Eisenbach's experience during the Holocaust? So he was 16 years old when the, uh, when the Nazis took over in Poland very rapidly in 1939. And uh, honestly, being 16 tells something of one story. If one is 76 or six months old, um, one is rapidly seen as not being of any use. But sometimes when one is just kind of in that age sweet spot, um, it can predispose one to having slightly higher odds of surviving. And his family was middle class. Um, they were then put into the ghetto of Lodz, his, his birth city. Uh, and he was able to kind of um, make the right choices and have luck on his side as he went through. He saw his family being uh, liquidated around him. And so when the time came for his deportation order uh, to be issued, and he was then ordered to uh, sort of get on the, the cattle car to Auschwitz, he knew what was coming and he was kind of able to make the right decision about whether to report or not. Okay. Well, we won't. Uh, well, well, spoilers. He I'll survived. Leave the yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So the you, I'm sure that they're you know that he tells this story in uh, uh, in uh, very uh, suspenseful and uh, full 
fashion. Yes, it's remarkable to hear him. He's so sober, and he chooses his words with scientific precision, and uh, and it's also dramatic. But the but the drama isn't sort of trumped up. It's um it's really you 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 feel the history very directly through him. It's uh, it's it's the real thing. It's the actual mm-hmm. story, and that of course mm-hmm. is the crux of the entire program is bringing people here who actually had this experience to not only uh, talk about, you know, bring that home to those of us who didn't, but also because, you know, even today we still have Holocaust deniers who say it didn't happen. We need these people to come and say, yes, it did. I was there. Certainly the, the era in which we live is one that makes it especially important for, uh, for us to go listen to the stories of people like Dr. Eisenbach. Um, I'm thinking of the mosques that have been burned recently in Texas. I'm thinking of the Jewish cemeteries that have been desecrated. Uh, those uh, people shot in Kansas City uh, because someone thought that they were some uh, some Middle Eastern ethnicity, I think, and turned out they were Indian. Uh, these little, uh, not little to them, but but sort of you know less than Holocaust level uh, incidents of hate. Um, you know, they can grow. And the Holocaust didn't begin with the gas chambers. It began with individual incidents, individual hatreds. And that's why these stories are important, is to try to put a stop to that before they grow, um, before they grow out, of, out of hand. What would you say to a young person who, you know, to whom the Holocaust and World War II is not just history, but ancient history, yeah. uh, about the importance of, you know, going to hear, you know, an old guy talk? Well, for one thing, um, you know, people like the speaker who is coming, uh, you know, they witnessed it firsthand. And a young person today is going to be part of the last generation to be that link to actual history. Very soon, it will be oh, their children's remembrances and, you know, videos and other ways. But it's going to be always kind of at one step remove. And so that young person who can really hear from, from firsthand experience, that's something special and that's something that they'll be able to tell their children and grandchildren and sort of pass the, pass the story on. There'll be several opportunities to hear and see Dr. Eisenbach, the Thaler Holocaust Remembrance Speaker. Uh, we went through those at the top of the interview. Is there a place online where people can go to take a look at the full schedule? Yeah, so they can find the schedule and they can find directions and more specific information about where, uh, you know, what, what auditorium it'll happen in uh, at holocausteducate.org. That's holocausteducate, one word, dot org. All right, John Chamoff from the uh, Thaler uh, Holocaust Remembrance Committee, professor at Coe College. Thank you so much for uh, being here and uh, good luck with the events. Thank you very much, Dennis.